Hello and welcome to this edition of Take Notice. I'm your host, Janet Yee, and today we're going to shed some light on a deeply alarming trend. It's called vaping. Our guest today is Shallon Craig. Shallon, you are the co-chair of the San Mateo County Tobacco Education Coalition. Now, in terms of vaping, uh, I think there's a myth going around that there's no nicotine in this, hence it's, it's harmless. Yes, unfortunately, that is a major misconception that we're seeing, especially with young people that are using these products, is that, well, they're just flavors and it's a harmless vapor that's coming out of the product. Unfortunately, the industry has been really successful in marketing and branding these products this way. What we really want teachers, parents, staff of schools especially to know is that there's nicotine in these products. Nicotine is addictive. Uh, not only is there nicotine, but with the flavors, there are chemicals to flavor the products. And uh, you, you, young people are inhaling this, um, these toxic chemicals and fine particles, and so it's not harmless and it's very addictive. And the younger that people are exposed to this, um, the bigger of an issue it becomes. It can become later on in life. And they're calling the the, the flavor e-juice. So a lot of the kids, I don't even think, are, are, are thinking in terms of this e-juice is, is actually it's chemicals. Yes, there's, you know that. There's something called uh, popcorn lung that I was reading about. So we do know that there's health hazards to this. Yes, and unfortunately that the way that the juices, the liquids, the cartridges are packaged and presented are very much like candy. Um, they're marketed to be appealing to young people, colorful, the flavors are, you know, bubble gum, cotton candy, you know, there's thousands of flavors out there that really are not being marketed towards, you know, 50, 60 year olds, they're being marketed towards teenagers um, that may not be aware and have been misled about these products because when you look at the packaging again, it's not clearly stated always that there is nicotine or how much nicotine is in them. And they're also making them look like uh, techno gadgets. Yes, uh, another very successful tactic has been uh, to target the, this young generation that is very tech oriented, <laughs> very much on our phones. Um, I'll speak from personal experience, you know, uh, very much drawn towards these techie, new, trendy devices. And so a lot of them, while they initially created e-cigarettes to resemble traditional cigarettes, what they found or what we see is that, you know, young people have negative associations with cigarettes, traditional cigarettes. But by rebranding and repackaging, redesigning e-cigarettes and vape pens to look like flash drives, um, to look like these technical, sleek, um, concealable devices, mm -hmm. it's, it creates a disconnect. So they're not associating those negative effects of nicotine that they do with traditional cigarettes. They're not getting the harshness that they're getting with traditional cigarettes because of the flavors. And so they're basically unrecognizable as cigarettes that contain nicotine that are addictive and harmful. Okay. now. What do parents do? These do not look like typical cigarette packaging that a parent might be used to. Uh, and from what I gather, there's no smell or no, no foul smell like with a nicotine cigarette. What do parents do? How do they keep eyes on their kids? I think it's really important for parents to, first of all, do some education, um, even just doing simple Google searches online, but on a deeper level, getting really involved with your child's school. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of schools have existing curriculum that they do around tobacco education, and so making sure that that curriculum is up to date and is relevant around vaping, around e-cigarettes, around the new products that are constantly coming out. Connecting with the school staff, because it's important to see what these products actually look like, and school staff are often confiscating these products on a regular basis and can have examples, actual uh, devices to show you these are what these products can look like. Now in most parts of the country, kids can buy these when they're 18. In California, it's 21. What's happening in San Mateo County? So San Mateo County is actually sort of ahead of the curve in terms of uh, addressing the issue of access. Um, and it's a big issue because it, young people are accessing them in retail locations as well as online platforms. So wh when we're looking at retail locations, San Mateo County, the Board of Supervisors recently passed a policy prohibiting the sale of all flavored tobacco products. And that applies to the unincorporated areas of the county. And the hope is that in the future, local cities, local jurisdictions will adopt similar policies banning the sale of flavored tobacco products. And that's for anyone who's any age can't buy those products. And so, and then looking at the issue of online access, that is a much bigger monster to address, right? But it, it's one very important point for parents to be aware of that young people can buy these products online. And often, you know, I've heard stories of people using their parents' Amazon accounts and things like that to buy these devices. You know, you guys are up against in terms of, of 
anti-vaping campaigns, a huge marketing campaigns. Um, and you mentioned that kids are, are they're you know against social injustice so you're you're finding ways to fight these big marketing campaigns mm -hmm. yes there is a lot of money poured into targeting young people and targeting certain communities low-income communities communities of color and if you look at the history of the tobacco industry and big tobacco you see that consistently and we're seeing the same patterns being replicated with e-cigarettes and vape pens and so one really effective approach with young people is that yes there's all this money being poured into this industry and it might seem daunting to kind of take it on but young people have power too and young people get really amped up and really excited when they learn about injustices and that they can actually do things on a local level and come out and say to their city officials I don't want to be targeted you know by t by these tobacco companies and by these you know vape and like e-cigarette companies and this is an injustice because young people are being targeted at an early age and we don't want to be taken advantage of in this way and we need you to protect us and do education and make sure that this is not a this is not an issue that we that we see replicated with the traditional cigarettes that that has happened with uh, pre previous generations you're so knowledgeable about this why did you get involved so it's very personal to me. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles and I grew up in apartment buildings for most of my life. Uh, not a single one of them that I can recall had a no smoking policy um, and if they did, it wasn't enforced. So I was exposed at a very early age to secondhand smoke. Um, I was also in, uh, exposed to secondhand smoke because my father has been a lifelong smoker. And so he is a direct reflection of that generation of the 60s and 70s where uh, smoking was very normal <laughs> and not only that but his communities black communities were specifically targeted by these tobacco companies and told um, lies that smoking nicotine can help with asthma and things like that mm -hmm. things that I've heard my my own father say and so being exposed at a very early age to tobacco smoke and tobacco products I, I definitely did uh, do attribute my asthma to being exposed at such an early age as well. And so, you know, this is an issue that's very personal to me. I don't think that young people especially should have to be exposed to harmful smoke and harmful chemicals in their own home especially. So that's one of the, one of the reasons I got involved in specifically the smoke-free multi-unit housing campaigns in the county. Well, thank you so much for getting involved. We really appreciate your time today and your helping with this deeply troubling issue of vaping. And thank you for joining us with this edition of Take Notice. Have a safe day.